Hello, biology students. We've learned about the basics of meiosis and mitosis, but now we're going to talk about, well, the details of meiosis. What are the stages and how did making those special sex cells become so important? So when we talk about the phases or stages of meiosis, we first have to think about, well, before meiosis begins, what needs to happen to the cell's DNA? Well, just like for mitosis, it replicates during interphase. So interphase is the normal life of a cell. The cell that will become an egg cell or sperm cell also has to go through interphase and DNA has to replicate. After interphase, where the DNA will replicate, the whole meiosis occurs a little differently than mitosis because actually there are two, two rounds of division two rounds of PMAT. Wow, that's crazy. So let's learn about those two different rounds of PMAT after we first zoom into an important part of one of those things. So what you will see in prophase one is an important thing happening and it's called crossing over. Crossing over is when the homologous pairs, pairs that are the same from mom and dad with the same traits on the same chromosome, they will exchange genetic information. So notice that the two big chromosomes here, they're like hugging. And I like to think of like the daddy one that's blue is giving the mommy one that's green DNA. And we can see that because it looks like they're exchanging socks. They're actually like switching colors here, which is super weird. Same thing, the matching ones, the homologous pairs that are little, they're also crossing over and they're exchanging DNA. So this is really cool because the mommy and the daddy ones, they end up switching DNA, causing new variations of chromosomes that never existed before. Crossing over is what allows for sexual reproduction, making sperm and egg to be super unique. It happens differently every time, which is why if you have a sibling, you and your sibling aren't exactly the same as one another because every time sperm or egg are made by a mom or a dad, they're different. Every sperm is different a little bit and it's a lot to do with crossing over. Wow. So now let's look at the stages in super detail, but this was a part that you have to know and we wanted to notice early on. So on your notes, you will see this diagram. And what I'd ask that you do is notice that for meiosis one, we're going through PMAT. So I'd like you to underneath each diagram to label prophase one. Notice that they're diploid because there's two copies of every chromosome, a mommy and a daddy chromosome. By the time I'm at metaphase, where they meet in the middle for the first time, I'm still diploid. There's two copies of every chromosome. All right, notice that the chromosomes are hanging out with their homologous pairs. Crossing over happens in prophase one. Anaphase, the chromosomes move apart. They're still pretty diploid because this is one big cell, but they're starting to move apart from one another. By the time I'm forming two new nuclei, two separate cells in telophase one, I now only have one copy of the big chromosome here and one copy here, meaning they're starting to be considered haploid because I have half of the original number of chromosomes, one big copy, one little copy, half where here I had two copies of each. Interesting. So make sure on our notes we labeled the phase names and haploid or diploid. Now I have mitos meiosis two. Remember how I said that there's two rounds of division? PMAT is happening again. So now we're gonna label on the next diagram prophase two. I'm still haploid here. I only have one copy of each type of chromosome. Metaphase two, they meet in the middle again. Anaphase two, they're pulling apart again. Telophase two, two new nuclei form again. And by the end, I have my end results. I have one, two, three, four daughter cells. Huh, was there four daughter cells in mitosis? No, how many was there? Only two. And this time, each of the resulting nuclei is a little different. If I really looked here carefully, I'd notice that the blue and green are different combinations for the big and the little chromosome in each of the daughter cells. So not only are they haploid, but they're non-identical. So we can summarize this results 
as there are four genetically unique haploid daughter cells, which is super different than mitosis. Remember that these are all gametes. We were just forming four sperm or four eggs. They're gametes, they're sex cells. So let's in the end compare uh, mitosis and meiosis. So how many divisions were for mitosis? One, two for meiosis. That's how many times we go through PMAT. How many daughter cells? Two for mitosis, four for meiosis. Which one's genetically identical or unique? Mitosis was identical. They were exactly the same cells that were the parent cell. Because I want to have the same skin cell if I got hurt, reform. But if I'm making egg or sperm, I need them to be unique for meiosis. The results of mitosis are diploid, right? And the results of meiosis were haploid, half the normal number of chromosomes. And then in mitosis, I was making body cells, like skin. And in meiosis, I'm making gametes, like egg and sperm. Great job, guys. Way to go through the details of mitosis and compare it with the details now of meiosis. See you in class where we'll practice this a whole bunch.